So we have a special edition of Answer the Question this week. Normally, I will throw a series of provocative and hard-hitting questions at Dominique Foxworth, but because of the magnitude both of this game and I think of this question, we're going to limit it to just one. Ooh. And RC is here to go along with it. Cool. Cowboys-Eagles play a monster game on Sunday night. Oh, yeah. If you could have one or the other of the quarterbacks, not in this game, but as your team's quarterback, they were drafted the same year, would you take Dak Prescott or Carson Wentz? So in this game, I think the Eagles are going to win. But if I could choose one of these quarterbacks, I would choose Dak Prescott. Why? He has been more impressive over his – or he's been better and more successful over his run than – they both came to the league at the same time – than Carson Wentz has. And in these last few games, even though we want to bag on him for these last few games, his QBR is good for fifth in the league. If you just – in his losses, his QBR is higher than Aaron Rodgers in his wins. The man is good. We have a narrative where we want to blame him. People keep doing that. Like, he is not one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, and I think he's better than Carson Wentz. RC, agree or disagree? I disagree. Now, I do think that Dak Prescott is a good NFL starting quarterback. I think that Carson Wentz is a star. The things that we've seen Carson Wentz do, you go back two years ago, he's leading the MVP race until he's hurt in L.A. And even this year, if you look at two of those early losses, if there's two catches made by his wide receivers, those are wins. And now we're looking at this team in a different light. You go back to last week against them, the Minnesota Vikings. This is a team that couldn't stop a nosebleed, getting bombed on over the top. And Carson Wentz kept this game close with his talent, with his will, and with his playmaking. I believe that right now, Dak Prescott is on a better team, but Carson Wentz is the better quarterback. And going forward in the future, one of those guys will be known as, you know what, he won some games managing football games. The other guys is going to be he is the reason. Nick, why are you doing that? Dak Prescott is on a better team? I think Dak Prescott's team has more stars, but I think we all would agree that Carson Wentz's team is more well-rounded. And one of the criticisms of Dak Prescott is always, like, he uses all this support to set him up. Right now he's playing without both of his starting tackles, without both of his receivers, and Carson Wentz, his team won the Super Bowl without him. So right. talk about a team that is getting a player that's getting supported. Yes, that, that okay. Listen, that's that's that that's two years ago. That's not a, how it works, right? We don't get to a, go back there. Fact. No, it's a fact. But it doesn't have anything to do with this team right now. The team that was supposed to have Deshaun Jackson outside. The team that was supposed to have a healthy Alshon Jeffrey. Jalen Mills is now is was on injury reserve with PUP, maybe destined to come back. This team is I not playing through, well. I can throw, go through the Cowboys injuries also. They're not right. playing well either. Lyle Collins missed last game. Ty Smith missed. Uh, two games. Let's talk about more pressing injury concerns with this because uh, I'm that's, a hundred, that's the killer. I'm 100% team Wentz, but he has not shown he can stay healthy, and Dak Prescott has. Oh, the himbo, tricky himbo trivia question of the day. How many games has Carson Wentz missed? Eight. How many games has Dak Prescott missed? Zero. So, I mean, uh, Why did you say it that way? Why did you say that so that people couldn't? You were saying the word zero. Yeah, I, but you I made gave, it sound I like it you, might have been seven, which oh, confused no. everyone. I was, I was giving a little well, flavor. You didn't like Greeny, no flavor. No, no, no flavor. Greeny, let me tell you. Let Sarah. me tell you. Let me tell you why you're mad, Greeny. Because what you knew coming into this conversation is that Dominique was wrong. Right. And you knew I'm that every. Wrong. You knew that everything he said in support of Dak was still wrong as compared to Carson Wentz. So what did you do? You threw him a lifeline because it was the only thing that you can lean on if you say if you I are a logical, a rational. I can lean on these numbers. You absolutely know lean because your eyes, because you feel like your eyes numbers. are lying to you. My because when you watch a football me. game so, and you see Carson Wentz play quarterback and you see Dak Prescott play quarterback, your eyes tell you that Carson Wentz is better at playing quarterback than Dak Prescott is. He's I better agree. at some things. He's not better at all things. I, that's, and that, that really is it. And so, I mean, despite your – for inexplicably try deciding to do that last one with an accent. I thought that went very well, Maria. <laughs> take us somewhere <laughs> else. Accent. Trust me, Greeny, this is going to go very, very well. We go to the hardwood here. The Clippers, they're projected to have the highest win total of teams in the West. They also are projected to have the highest percent chance to reach the finals of any Western team. That's 27.5%. Mm. We'll discuss whether or not we agree with all that. As for the other Los Angeles team, the Lakers, they are projected to finish with 50 wins. That's the fifth best in the West just behind those retooled Rockets. As for the under-the-radar teams, Utah with their new additions, Denver also with the all-star Nikola Jokic, and they're projected to have the second most wins in the West at 52. So, shall we run the floor in the wild, wild West, Jalen and Jay will Let's get it. All right, Jalen, let's start with you. How important will home court advantage be in the West? It's going to be extremely important. And unlike the numbers that was just up on the screen, 
Don't bet on the Clippers to have the best record in the West. Facts. I got two words for you, low you management. Lo <laughs> There's going to be a lot of that taking place as Paul George Paul also George. recovers from his shoulder surgery earlier in the year. Denver has the best chance to have the, has the best record because they come at you in waves. Ten players that have played over a thousand minutes last year. All right. How they play. Well, you guys kind of brought up the concerns then. How do you deal with what might be the injury that's going to harp with Paul George could lead into the season and Kawhi making sure that he's not playing too many games? You, How do you handle it? You, you bring Kawhi into the fold when it fits. Kawhi will dictate that. Last year he played 60 games. Paul George has had surgeries on both shoulders. His right rotator cuff is left labrum, so that will come back towards Missy. But you also have Lou Will. You forget, like, Lou Will and Montrezl Harrell, they came off the bench. They were dominating second units last year. So you got a guy who is three-time sixth man of the year. He'll carry the load. So they got a little bit of depth there. Yeah, that they are. could rely on. Jalen, who is one of the best teams out of the West nobody's talking about right now? Well, there is a couple, Maria. Jay just mentioned the Denver Nuggets, and rightfully so. I think people are sleeping on the Utah Jazz. They're going to be one of those teams that's up for possibly having the best regular season record. But you can't sleep again on the Denver Nuggets. Like Jay said, they just have so much depth. <laughs> All right, let's talk through the West a little bit and how you think it's going to shake out because I think that you had picked the Lakers essentially to win the entire title. You are going with the 76ers, so you're not a part of this conversation. <laughs> how do the Lakers handle, I mean, they have a lot of changes too and not a lot of depth and maybe an injury away from having issues down the stretch. When the playoffs come, you rely on your stars. Mm -hmm. The Lakers have two of the top five players in the game that are compatible with one another. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, high pick and roll. You decide to switch it. AD can pop and make the jump shot. He can post up smaller guards. Of course, each team has weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the finisher at the point guard spot? When Rajon Rondo has the ball, that means LeBron James does not have the ball. That's not a formula for success. I think it'll be Danny Green. I think it'll be Avery Bradley guarding the other team's point guards. But I feel like in a playoff series, the Los Angeles Lakers have what it takes to possibly win it all. We talk a lot about the projections of the regular season, but as J. Rose said, low, low management, mm -hmm. Paul George coming back. It's not about where you are in the regular season. It's about where you are fully healthy during the playoffs when that time comes around. I'm still rocking with the Clippers. I just think from top to bottom, soup to nuts, they are one of the best defensive teams in the league. Now we'll, be, it will, we'll get a chance to see Kawhi go against LeBron. I mean, I, that's going to be the battle right there. And if Kawhi feels like he is healthy at that stage, because I, I think LeBron is going to have an MVP caliber type season this season. Yeah, they have two of the best defenders for sure in Paul George and Kawhi. You kind of talked about which teams are set for the regular season. Who is best able to have a successful regular season? Like who could walk away with the win, but not necessarily win the entire shift? So, on paper, I would say the Lakers and the Clippers should be the Western Conference final. Mm -hmm. But the problem is they won't have the first and the second right. best records mm -hmm. in the conference, Agreed. which means they may face each other in the second round. The teams that you're talking about, Utah mm -hmm. is going to be in the conversation, adding Mike Conley at the point guard spot. Denver, Jokic is going to be an MVP candidate. He's going to be amongst the league leaders in multiple statistical categories. Those couple of teams are going to surprise a lot of people. Now, I'll go back to this, too. I, you know, look, with the playoffs, I know that we do East versus West. I just wish we would finally do the right thing. 116. Just, one through just 16. top through 16, especially with how loaded the West is. There's some teams that are going to make the playoffs in the East where you're like, look, I get it that y'all made the playoffs, but y'all don't need to be in that conversation. <laughs> well, to take it a step further, the All-Star game as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should take the 24 best players of either conference, not just 12 and 12 from Great. either conference. Facts. Because there are some people in the Eastern Conference that made the All-Star team last year that, that definitely should. wouldn't make it in the West. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, until we get there, we still got to break it up to the East and the Wild Wild West. We'll be doing that all season. And our coverage NBA countdown starting at 7 p.m. Eastern right here in the Seaport Studios. As we roll right into a doubleheader, we've got the Hawks taking on the Knicks. Adrian Wojnarowski is going to join us in studio as long, alongside Richard Jefferson. We're going to have a good time and get What's you set for the final preseason games. Seven? Yeah, seven, seven okay. o'clock. Right. You got yeah. it. You said it's up there again. Countdown at seven Eastern. What time seven. we come on?